This yeah. is so great Hi. to have the opportunity to talk to you. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing very good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, okay. I think the last time I spoke to you was for a walk to remember. So that was a few years ago. You know, what can I say, oh, right? Wow. Wow. Well, <laughs> we, we know that's we know that's 20 years right now. No, no, um, no. No, no, no. You lie. That That's not true. 20 years? The only, the only reason why I can truly answer that correctly is because this was the, uh, this year was the 20th anniversary. So... Otherwise, I would get that wrong. I'd be like, ah, 15, 12, 11, 10. I don't know. Oh, um, my God. Well, I don't know. We both look 20 or we both are 20. So I don't know how that, how yeah, that happens. But fair, 20, 21. But yeah, yes. Okay. All right. You know, we were, we were babes in the woods right. when, we, when we did that. <laughs> but uh, congratulations on this. Now, I understand. First of all, I got to ask you right off the bat. Are you an escape room kind of person? Um, in reality, no. Um, in theory, yes, if that makes any sense. I, I'm too much of a, uh, uh, perfectionist when it comes to that kind of stuff. If I was in an escape room, it, you know, in reality with some friends and I couldn't get anything correct, or I wasn't able to help us do anything, yeah. um, I would be very, very upset very frustrated. So I don't like to put myself in those positions. I'm very competitive with that. It's the same when I realized I couldn't bowl very well. And I okay. started bowling, bowling as a lefty. I'm a righty, but I started bowling as a lefty just to try and make it harder because I just, I couldn't do the basics. That kind of stuff will drive me crazy. Wow. But to watch it, absolutely. To be in a film where it's pretend, absolutely. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff is, you know, I'm a thriller suspense genre fan. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I was going to say then, then what really, when you got this script presented to you, you know, kind of what compelled you? Because, man, you know, this is a very concentrated set. You know, mm -hmm. you're working with only a few people here. Uh, yep. You're down and dirty and disgusting in a cornfield. Uh, fun times, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, also being a fan of, as I was saying, being a fan of the genre, it's a little easier, I guess, for me to say Yes to that, but I there was a there was a lot of reasons. Look, um, I was a big Children of the Corn. I'm a big Stephen King fan, but big Children of the Corn fan growing up. Yeah, um, I was an '80s kid, so the the uh, this was my Children of the Corn in a way. I was like, oh, I haven't seen anything like this that came my way um, right. from an acting perspective. So this could be my chance. So I'm going to go for it. But then um, finding out that it was going to be a real cornfield. It was in Canada, outside yep. of Toronto, where they had yep. built this or had grown this cornfield that was not as endless as it is in the film, but it did go on for a very long, it was quite intimidating. And that is very important to me. Um, I love having that real vibe that helps with a claustrophobic vibe, which is what I was hoping, you know, which, which, which they did very well in the, in the Children of the Corn movie. Yeah. I was hoping we would do the same thing too. The unexpected twists, um, where you think it might be a certain thing of right. some ilk, and then it's not. Um, so all of that kind of stuff really helped me out. But the, the, but the scariest part wasn't the actual plot or the twists and turns of the film. It was the fact that we were maybe one of the first films in North America to shoot during COVID. Yes. And, you know, we shot, we started in July of 2020. That was, we lost a lot of people in the sense that there were people attached that decided to back out and maybe mm -hmm. rightfully so because they were a little worried or of course. Um, there was crew that did the same. There was now at the time, Canada was doing better than we were numbers wise and things like that. So the crew in Canada felt a lot safer mm -hmm. than a lot of us actors coming from like Tahira coming from London, um, the rest of us coming from America. We were all a little, you know, yeah, wilded out in that kind of sense. But but I, Theo Rossi and I jumped on board because we thought we knew each other, big fans of each other. Mm -hmm. and we knew we knew that we wanted to get out and try something instead of instead of staying at home. I get we wanted well, to like we wanted to get out and do something different. Yeah, well, I'm speaking to you from Toronto, my friend. So there I, you, go. you know, there you go. And I, I know, I know, I love Toronto. Well, we love having you here. But I was going to say, I, I know, I remember when this production went into, you know, when you guys started, and I was thinking, like, well, good on them, but God, I hope they're safe. But now thinking about it, when now that you're, you were yeah. out, you were out of the, uh, one of our 
uh, just north of Toronto or with this cornfield. Because I know we have beautiful areas in north of here where, where there's farms yeah. and all these places where you can shoot this. So being right. outside and being in this environment, I would think would have made it, I mean, of course, precautions and everything, no question, because it was the of height course. of the pandemic. But of course. maybe ma made you feel a little bit like, okay, like this is this is doable. 100%. I think, yes, script wise, we felt like it was doable, the environment for sure. And it was on a farm. Um, and this was a part of a farm. So everything was very separate. You know, the crew, you know, we have one set, it was a cornfield. So, yeah. you know, we <laughs> had our, the actors had their way of getting to the set. And the crew had their way of getting to the set. And it was separated by a bunch of trees. And it was a very well thought out uh, plan in a time where we didn't really know how to plan. So yeah. it was, yeah. you know, what we, we knew what we knew and we were just doing our best to make sure everybody was as safe as possible. And back then everyone was wearing masks. Right. We really didn't know. I, I still, to this day, don't even know what half the crew ever really looked like. Looked like. <laughs> yeah, you just get, you know, you get the eyes and that's about it. Um, yeah. And, uh, but it was, look, we were always outside. We were always getting fresh air. Yeah. Um, we, we, we the, the actors, we all quarantined in our hotel together. Right. So even though we were tested daily, um, we, the actors and I would eat, we, we would, we would all eat with each other and that was about it. And we would yeah. like be on the phone and we'd be in conference, conference meetings and things like that. So it, it was the safest, it was the, I was trying to think about this because I have been doing this for a while, but it was probably the safest experience, COVID or not COVID, yeah. that I've ever been involved on in a film. It makes you think for future projects, you know, like, yeah. let, let's just hope this freaking COVID goes away for good. But it just also, it put a lot of stuff in perspective, I think, for mm -hmm. everybody, oh. don't you think? Well, Absolutely. And I think also it, for the for the look for the industry, I think it kind of brings back as we started to see people wanted material, they needed material during yeah. obviously COVID and entertainment. And it's why the streaming services did so well with certain programs blowing up. Um, sure. And uh, maybe they wouldn't have done so well uh, uh, pre COVID. Um, you, you never know. But everybody, yeah, uh, everybody was so but telling a story that's contained, which I think sometimes is important. And this was a, a, con a contained story that is built based off of your main character, the corn, and then yeah. the actors that have to that have to pull you in with their performances because that's all that matters in this mo movie. You yeah, know? for sure. Okay, so these six characters, like they're all kind of thrown into this situation. They wake up and they're like, oh my God, I'm in this cornfield. How did I get there? And they were all given one uh, one thing, like when they right. you know woke up. So one had a gun or a bullet or a compass or a canteen, et cetera, et cetera. What would be your survival item if you were put in, you know, if you needed one thing? Well, especially if we're using those six items, I would love to say the gun because that just your your initial thought is, but it's only one bullet anyway. Right. Um, Got to be careful. Um, Can't waste I that bullet. No, I think it would have to be the water canteen because I mean, at least that's the smart thing. You know, you can use your hands, you can do other things like that for digging or whatever or survival, yeah. but you need, you need the water. Yeah. Okay. Good one. How do you know mm -hmm. when you can trust somebody? Here are six people thrown into this situation. You don't know the next person if they're the, if they're the bad guy or whatever. So how do you know, Shane, when you can trust somebody? Uh, are you talking about me in life or are you yes. talking about in this no, in real life okay. <laughs> um, or like if we're just thrown into a cornfield if you and I are thrown into a cornfield well, you, um, you could trust me in a cornfield I promise you <laughs> yes well I would hope you could trust me as well um, there you go. we go way I back would, Shane we go I way know, back 20 yeah. years apparently yeah <laughs> um so I mean I'd say uh how do you try look a lot of <laughs> a lot of you, you can see it in the eyes a lot yeah. of the time um, a lot so. of times in the eyes, it can, you know, let you know inherently if if someone's uh, not as like good or evil or something as generic as that, but if someone is, is got a heart, you know, right. um, and a soul. And I think that's kind of the best way. And I think life experience is the only way to figure that out. It's not easy in Los Angeles, it's not easy in Hollywood. You know, you are, you know, city of lost angels surrounded by the beasts everyone yeah. trying to do what you're doing and try and do it better. So yeah. it's a very hard thing to do, but if you can make friends there, you can make friends anywhere. 
Yeah, good point. You also have uh, another film out at the same time, Chariot, and you got to yes, work with yeah. John Malkovich. I, know, I mean, how did you I wrap know. your mind around that? I didn't. I don't think I did. I think I, but th thankfully, thankfully my, well, I guess it was a couple scenes with him, but my main or bigger scene that was actually with him, storyline wise, all I had to really do was react. I had to be afraid, concerned, yeah. worried that he was, that he had showed back up into my life. Um, that wasn't hard because it was pretty much a reality uh, for me as well. I was like, wow, this is fantastic. I was friends with the director. He knew he wanted me to get to get to me to be a part of the film, which I really enjoyed that script and I really enjoyed that film. I thought yeah. Thomas Mann and Rosa Salazar were fantastic. And so was Scout and obviously John, but um, he wanted someone who he could believe in to to be able to go to work with John um, as this as this finale part of the film. And I was very, I mean, you know, blessed that he thought of me. And um, yeah, John. John was incredible. He, the, the color he did in his hair was all, you know, him just thinking of these. He put a bow in his hair right before that scene. I was there Crazy. when he was thinking about it in the in the in the wardrobe makeup makeup area. And uh, he just it looked like he was excited to be a part of it, which is which is awesome, too, for such a, an older, established um, actor who's been there and, you know, done that and seen it all. Yeah. He seemed to be excited about, you know, that film. So I'm very happy that that film is out as well. That's amazing. So what, you know, just to wrap it up, what, what excites you now these days when you get a script and what are we going to see next after this? Because yeah, I love that you mix up your genres, you know? I'm trying. Yeah. You know, I feel like, I feel like the thriller genre is definitely um, coming at me because the next, the next one that's coming out, well, I have a film coming out in June. So honestly, about three weeks after Escape the Field and um, it's called Mid-Century. And it is a uh, love story, but but uh, but a ghost kind of love story, and it is very very offbeat, okay. um, very wild and weird. And um, it's Stephen Lang, who I love, yes. um, and Bruce Dern. We got we were fortunate enough to get both of them. Nice. And then um, Sarah Hay, Sarah Hay and Chelsea Gilligan are in it. That are that, that were fantastic young actresses, and um, it's. It's kind of very Lynchian. It's a very um, sometimes uh, like uh, basically my character would be the Kyle in a in a David Lynch movie, kind of keeping everything rooted. But oh. I think that, and I'm excited for people to see that for sure. I was able to help produce that one, um, so you. it's a little closer to my heart as well. But I think what keeps me going is is it's hard for me to pinpoint an exact character. It's more about what comes my way. So it's right. like if. And I, I know it when I see it on the page and then you just hope, you know, hope by, by God that it turns out great once it's, uh, once it's done. Um, but it's, I just like doing things that are a little bit different. Some that, you know, stand out, some that challenge me. And hopefully each character is if you could just see it on a board, looks a little bit different or is a little bit different. That was what was fun about Escape the Field too, being able to play this ex-Afghanistan soldier who is, you know, I, I bolted up for the role and oh yeah, got, yeah, got to be a little beat up. And you know, that was that was fun because I don't think a lot of people. It's not that I hadn't done that before. I mean, I kind of did that on Salem anyway. But you know, to you know, from the from the bulk grizzled part. Uh, but to uh, be able to do that, uh, I think that will surprise some people. Yeah, you know, I think well, it just keeps surprising some people. Well, keep keep up the great work. I always love, you know, you. seeing you on screen and everything. And, and uh, you know, let, let's not wait 20 years until the next chat, okay? <laughs> I would say, I would say so. That would be a great idea. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time. Always a pleasure. Right, thank Best you. of luck with the film and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.